My name is James T. Gill. Uh, my friends call me Jim. And when were you born? In January 26, 1933. Where were you born? Jackson, Tennessee. Ah. So please tell me about your family when you were growing up, your parents and your siblings. When I was very young, we were a very, very poor family. Uh, my father <coughs> was titled a stone cutter. What he did was to make, he made headstones for graves. Uh, we, <coughs> we lived in a time when, when people didn't have an abundant amount of anything. Great but, Depression. <coughs> but we had a great amount of love. Uh, when I came home each day from school, my mother was home. When my dad got home off from work, my dad came home. We were a family who worshiped together and we took care of each other. So you're Christian? Yes, I am. Oh, so from the very early childhood? Yes. My mother and father were Christians. And my grandmother and grandfather were Christians. So you believe in Jesus Christ? Absolutely, I believe in Jesus Christ. And you believe that the uh, resurrection of his? I absolutely know he was resurrected, yes. Great. I am Christian too. I'm proud of you. Oh, it will be great to talk to you today. So tell me about the schools you went through. Oh, by the way, how many siblings? You siblings? Or, yeah. There was three, <coughs> three boys and three girls. And you are the? I am in the middle. I'm, the three girls were oldest. And I'm the oldest boy. You said three girls or three boys? Three girls, also three boys. Oh. Six children. Six children? Yeah. Big family, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Tell me about the school you went through. The uh, public school. It was a small uh, school in a town that was mostly farming community. It was so uh, dedicated to farming that they closed the school down in the fall, and the children went home and helped to, to harvest the crops. Jeez. Uh, I'm very surprised this, in this day and age that this little town, country town in Tennessee, had such good, a good school system and such good teachers that a lot of the things that my grandchildren learn, uh, we learned at about the same age. and. Uh, I think that uh, we learned a lot of other values too. When I was going to school, they taught things like health and personal hygiene and morals. So uh, we got a good education and it, it prepared me for the, for the future. But at, when I was finished the ninth grade and uh, I was just 15 years old, my father died. Oh. I was the oldest boy, so I quit school and went to work to help support the family. Mm. Later on in life, my mother married, remarried, and I, she didn't need me to help support the family anymore, so I joined the Navy. What did you work after you dropped out of the school? I was a butcher. Butcher. And when did you join the Navy? In, uh, in 1950. Do you remember the month? It was, uh, it was about November. Why Navy? Why Navy? Because I had never been anywhere. I never had uh, seen anything much outside of the county that I lived in. So I wanted to see some of the world. At the same time, I was from a very patriotic family, and I wanted to help with the war against Korea, uh, hmm. the battles in Korea. Uh, my, my three sisters were, two were married to soldiers. One was a, a, a Navy medic. My two brothers later became Air Force personnel, all six of us. Uh, were involved in military. You knew that there was a Korean War broke out? 
Absolutely. How did you know? Through the news media. News media. Yeah. Did you know anything about Korea? No, I didn't know anything about Korea except that I, I think I believed it was in Southeast Asia. But I didn't know that the, uh, the communist uh, armed personnel from China and Russia and North Korea was, was invading South Korea. So you knew that the communists attacked South Korea? Yes, I did. And you wanted to help Korean yes. people? Yes. Even though you may lose your life there? Well, that's a risk everybody takes. Mm. Very nice of you. <laughs> so uh, where did you get the basic military training? In San Diego, California. How long? Uh, nine plus plus 16. I had 25 weeks. Wow, that's a quite long. Yes. Long uh, basic military training. What well, did you do? Well, we did, the, we did the basic training part, but then we were held over uh, for what reason, I don't know, but we were held over, so they sent us to, a, to an old abandoned camp from World War II, and they, we did a lot of uh, weapons training. What uh, kind? Uh, hand, handheld weapons like the, uh, the, the uh, military 45s, and then the uh, 1903 A3 bolt action rifles, and the Thompson submachine guns. And we had to qualify on each of these, and uh, I qualified expert on the rifle. But you are Navy, right? Yes. Do you need rifle? At times, to yes. battle? Sometimes. Oh. Well, in the amphibious force, you, you sometimes go ashore. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm. And when you're landing troops on the beach, if your boat gets, for any reason... You have to protect them. Gets, if it gets cracked, if it gets uh, where it cannot go back to the ship, then you have to go in with the troops. Right. You become part of the, the landing force. Right. Uh, sometimes the weather conditions alone, uh, where the... The sea is so violent, it's throwing uh, the boat into the, into the waves very hard and slamming them down into the sand, and sometimes it, it breaks down the boat. So the sailor has to get, either get back to the ship the best way he can or join the forces going in. Mm. What was your specialty in the Navy? Well, in the beginning, I started off, I was a, a baker and a cook. Wow. Mm. But and then? Uh, well, that went on for several years. When you, you're going to land troops on the beach, that back then was called one able, which would be one A, one alpha, or one able. My one able station for landing troops on the beach was in an amphibious assault boat. So when we fought in Korea, when I was, when I was landing troops or, la or landing for whatever reason to, to, re to retrieve troops, or to land them on the beach, then my station was not in a, in a galley. I, my, I was a, a lower ranking baker, so I went to, they assigned me to the boats, and that's where I got boat training and, and also amphibious landing training. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> when did you leave Korea from where? <laughs> when I left Korea, it's almost like a joke. It's, it's, a, it's almost like a comedy. Uh, I had orders, uh, and the, the negotiations for peace were, were just about to, to materialize. Mm -hmm. And they call me one day uh, into the ship's office and says, We've got, you have orders for, for shore duty in the United States. Ah. And they said I was going to SRNC in Maryland. Nobody, including my commanding officer, knew what that was. Oh. But we didn't find that out until I got, until I got there. But when I left the ship, the ship was in Incheon Harbor. You left San Diego early 1951 to Incheon, right? Yeah. To, yes. No, to, to Korea. To, we, were, we were up and down the coast of Korea. Okay. So you were around the coast of Korean Peninsula? 
all the time. One of our duties was to go to Japan and load up Army or Marine Corps troops and take them to the coast of Korea. Mm. We did that many times over 51, 52, and 53. So that was your main mission, right? It was to land the troops and get them get them out of Japan to Korea or out of Korea back to Japan. Right. And to move them up and down the coast. Sometimes we would take troops from Korea and go to another place on the coast of Korea mm -hmm. and offload the troops there. Right. One morning, we had, uh, we had 1,200 Marines from the 12th Marine Division, I believe, and we were to land them under fire. And I don't know where we, you know, it was just a, it was just a beach. So as we approached that area, the cruiser Toledo was in the harbor and the uh, two American destroyers were in the harbor and they were firing inland to drive the, try to drive the North Koreans back <clears throat> so we could land the troops. So we landed these troops under fire, but we also had that behind us, we had those ships firing ahead of us. So we landed 1,200 Marines uh, before the year was out. We picked up some Marines at another place, but it was only about 600. And I asked one of them, I, I thought I recognized him, and he hmm. said, he said, yes, he, <clears throat> that was the ship he came in on. And I said, well, uh, what happened after you left us? And they said, he said, 600 of us, 1,200, were killed almost immediately. When they landed. Mm -hmm. And you don't remember what that was. <laughs> to us in the Navy, you're just looking up there and you see a shoreline. Right. <laughs> no, no town, you don't land at a town. You, you land out there somewhere and all you see from the ship is just a thin line and when you get in closer you may see the trees and such. Wow, that's a real... Most of the time we don't know where we are and they don't bother to tell an ordinary sailor. It's just you're, you're going to be at a, you do a certain job at a certain beach at a certain time of day and that's it. That's, that's, all, it. You, that's all you need yeah. to know. So most of your mission was to carry the soldiers into certain area and then sometimes you bring back them to Japan because they are wounded or they are no, R&R? It's, it may be R&R. &R or and, going back to, to or, the state, right? Like some could be going back to the states. Mm. They'd leave our ship in, in Japan and then the, who knows, I don't know where they would go, if, but some went back to the states. What was the name of your ship? USS Henrico, H-E-N-R-I-C-O. And what kind of it was, ship was it? It was APA hull number 45. What? Number 45. That APA is Assault Personnel Attack. I'm sorry, Auxiliary Personnel Attack. Auxiliary. Personnel Attack. What do you mean by personnel? That means people. Oh. So auxiliary personnel attack. How big was it? How many were, how many crew were there? The crew was about 325 enlisted men and about 125 officers. So altogether it's about 500. Close to it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty big. And we had, <clears throat> yeah, when you're out there doing things like we had to fill in for Coast Guard, help out the Coast Guard uh, uh, patrol for mines in the water, uh, it is a big ship because Coast Guard uses small wooden ships for that job. So what is the main mission of this ship? Could main, you explain it again? The main mission of this ship is to <clears throat> 
move troops from one place to another. I, my orders read the first place to stop was fleet activities in Sean. Well, I'm seeing nothing but burned out land and nobody, and there's a little hut down the road. This old guy comes out and he says, where are you going, sailor? And I said, I'm supposed to report to fleet activities in Sean. He said, I am fleet activities in Sean. He took my orders, signed them, on, laid them on my back and signed them, gave them back to me and said, stand over there on that road. It's all bombed out, but stand on that road and somebody will come along and offer you a ride and uh, tell them you want to go to Yongdong Po. I said, okay. And I went over there with my sea bag on my shoulder and after a while, a jeep came by with a little tr one axle trailer behind it, two soldiers in it. They stopped. Said, Where are you going, sailor? I said, Young Dung Po. Put your sea bag in the tra in the trailer and sit on it. So I did, and they had a, a they had fun all the way to Young Dung Po because I was in there sitting on that sea bag in that little trailer, and they hit every bombed out hole in that road and it bounced it up in the air. And we get to Young Dung Po, and they said, okay, this is it, get out. And I got out, and there were just some Korean people there. And no, Mer no Americans, nothing. And I could, I, you know, nobody spoke anything but English. So <clears throat> eventually, there was a, 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 a U.S. airman walked, uh, walked up that street. And I asked him, how do you get to some place where the military is? He said, follow me, I'm going back to the base. So we walked back to the base and found out it was K-16. It was an airstrike. And so we stayed there, and then there was an air raid. It bombed, they bombed it a while and went on their way. And then eventually I rode a, a plane that was carrying mail back to Japan. And then that's, that's how I went inland so far. And you saw completely destroyed uh, Korea in 2010. When I went back, there was a superhighway. We were on a tour bus going 70 miles an hour down a super highway. There were high-rise buildings everywhere, <coughs> a super modern city. Uh, everything, that, the, the mount, what really shocks us all is all the hills were full of trees and green. Uh, one of the people escorting us, I uh, asked about the trees, and they said that Korea had a tree planting, the government had a tree planting program and they, re, they uh, reforested the, all, the, all the mountains, all the hills, in that in Korea, if you cut down a tree without the government's permission, you'll go to jail. A lot of people never know about how the tide, uh, in Incheon, I think it's the second most rapid and second highest tide in the world. And uh, sometimes the amphibious ships would be caught in that high tide the ocean would go away and the ship's sitting in mud hundreds of yards out. At, yep. and, and we went in one time and uh, our boats got caught in that tide. And we're sitting there in the mud up, up close to the, to the beach. And we can't do anything until the, the ocean comes back to visit us again. <laughs> so we, again, we had to go ashore. We as American troops, when we see what South Korea has evolved to, and people tell us we didn't win that war, I tell them, okay, <clears throat> you compare North Korea with South Korea and tell me who won. And I also, uh, I feel like that in our small way, and all of us do, all of us Korean War veterans feel like that we did, did something, we didn't know what we were doing, we just did what we were told, and we, <clears throat> we made it through it, we did a good job, we came back, nobody gave us any credit, but now that we're old men, we realize that we had a small part in Korea being able to be <clears throat> one of the best nations in the world. And so we have a, just a small part of it, but we did it.